All right. So, hello, 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 everyone. Um, this is your girl, Shanidra, coming to you with a divine message. And God showed me through a revelation. Um, I was just recently on the phone with my friend. And God began to give me this revelation of the blind man. And in the revelation of the blind man, the blind man, if you can't understand his plan, there's a divine process. I was telling you guys about the process we all have to go through. But I'm trying to show you part of the process that God has us to go through. And that's a divine process process when he heals us and he delivers us from certain stuff again he starts with the renewing of your mind so you won't be blind all the time and you will find and you will seek him and not them but i'm going to help you uh get the revelation of today and just like the blind man if you couldn't understand god's plan there's a divine process that he took the blind man through to make sure he wasn't going to Continue to be confused and delusional. Um, so, uh, Mark. Mark. M-A-R-K. Mark the 8th chapter. Starting at the 22nd verse. And it says, and it reads... They came to Bethsaida, uh, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. So some people, it is say some people brought a blind man and begged for Jesus to touch him. Because they know if Jesus touched him, he would heal it. Literally. Physically. Reality. Uh, verse 23. Mark the 8th chapter, verse 23. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. So God will take you outside the village, outside of what you're used to. So he took them outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him Jesus asks do you see anything so after he put his hand on the blind man so he can see uh, God asks him do you see anything he looked up and said I see people they look like trees walking around so God was like, okay. He he was thankful that the God told him the truth. So he realized that the blind man wasn't seeing things clearly. He was still seeing things distortedly. Uh, so he looked up and said, I see people, they look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hand on the man's eyes. So God was like, okay. Jesus was like, okay. He, he's not seeing clearly. So let me put my hands on him again so he can understand the divine process. So he put his hands. Uh, once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. This is verse 25. Mark the eighth chapter, verse 25. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. Now, he already opened the blind man's eyes, but the blind man wasn't seeing things clearly. He was seeing things distortedly, seeing trees as people. So God, you know, put his hand back over his eyes to try it again, to see how he was going to see it again. So once more, Jesus put his hand over his eyes. Then his eyes were open. His sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. See, when we go through this divine process, God is 
putting us in the process so that we can start seeing things clearly in reality, not distortedly. If you're still seeing trees and that's not reality, people are not trees, then you're not in tune with reality. You're seeing things distortedly and not reality in your own head instead. Um, his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly, clearly, clearly. When you go through this divine process, God helps you to see things clearly, like reality, really, that's really happening. Divine process. If you're not seeing things clearly, you need to be, he need to lay his hands on you again, my friend. You're not seeing things in reality and it's looking distortedly. He needs to put re once more, he needs to put his hands back on you again, my friend, because you're not seeing things in reality that's really clearly happening. Uh, verse 26, Jesus sent him home after he could see clearly. Now, notice, Jesus put his hand on him the first time, and he wasn't seeing things clearly. Jesus didn't send him home. The second time Jesus sent him home because he could then see things, everything, not some things, not a little bit of things clearly. He could see everything. It says everything clearly. So that's why the second time after he could see everything, not some things, not part of things, not a little bit of th he could see everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. Don't even go back there. Now that you can see Claire, don't go back there. Okay? I know that was country, but uh, then he sent him home. But he told him, don't even go back to the village. Don't even go back there because, you know. But he did not send him back home during his divine process, he did not send him back home until he could see things clearly. Everything. Not some things, not part of things, not a little. Until he could see everything clearly for what it actually is in reality. Then it says, uh, Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around the Syrian uh, Philippi on the way on the way he asked them who do people say that I am so he was wanting to ask now he already told them that they ain't supposed to be saying who they but he said he asked them on while they were in the villages who do people say that I am I want to know what do people say that I am like, are they in tune with reality or are they delusional? I'm trying to see how people see them. Literally. Who do you say? Well, he said, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. So they answered him like, some of them think that you're John the Baptist. Some of them think, you, think you're a prophet. Some of them think that you are Elijah. That's what they think. But Jesus asks, but what about you? Question mark. He asks, who do you say that I am? Who do men say that I am? He said, who do you? You, not them. I'm talking about you. Who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. But, you know, this is when Jesus predicts his own death. I'm trying to tell you the divine process so you can be blessed and not stressed. You know, the first process is that he heals your eyes so you can see things clearly, not distortedly, but you'll be in tune with reality. 
He won't send you on until you can see everything clearly, not distortedly. That's the first process. Then, first process, he renews your mind. Then he heals you from being blind all the time. And then now, you know, where you could be found is knowing who he is to you, realizing who he is. Who, who do you say that I am? So realizing who he is. Oh, that's the third part, sweetheart. Now Jesus predicts his death. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. Verse 32. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. So he let them know, look, I'm about to die, but I'm about to rise again in three, on the third day. Peter didn't understand God's divine plan. So he started rebuking God's plan because he didn't understand God's plan. He was still seeing things distortedly. Uh, but when Jesus turned and looked at his disciple, he rebuked Peter. He said, get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God. You walking around with a fake facade because you, you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. You're more concerned with what humans are going to think about you than what God, our Father, is is thinking about you. You won't be in tune with the truth and reality because it don't sound right. Because you're concerned about what they're going to think instead of what he's going to think. Human concerns. You're worried about human concerns. And what you're going to look like to humans. That's what he said. He said, but merely human concerns. You're not concerned with my father. Because if you was concerned with my father, you wouldn't have acted the way you acted. If you was concerned with my father. You wouldn't talk the way you talk. You wouldn't walk the way you walk. If you was concerned with my father. But no, your concern and why you can't discern is that you are concerned with merely human concerns. This is what, that's why he rebuked Peter. Uh, but merely human concerns. He said, you're not, you do not have a mind you do not have a mind, have in mind the concerns of God. Because you would tell the truth that shows proof. Uh, the way of the cross. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Now following... Jesus is denying yourself above everything else. Um, not leaning to your own understanding, but acknowledging God. That's what Jesus did. Acknowledging God in all of your ways. Um, knowing that you're going to be hated by others when you discover and you pick up your cross. You're going to take some losses when you pick up your cross. Uh, but like he said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. That's number one. This is the divine process. You have to deny yourself. Above anything else, you must deny yourself and what yourself wants.
He said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. He didn't say follow them. He said follow him. Uh, for whoever wants to save their life, whoever wants to save their life, will lose it. But whoever loses their life, for me, and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? What is it to gain the whole world? You got everybody, oh, we, they see you, 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 woo. But you done lost your own soul because you're being delusional. Uh, he said, what is it to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Question mark. Uh, or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me in my words, in this adulterous, adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his father's glory with the holy angels. And he said to them, truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see that the king, that the kingdom of God has come with power. So the divine process, number one, the renewing of your mind number two he heals you from being blind spiritually literally so you can see things clearly in reality not distortedly uh number three know know who he is that's number three um number four we uh Have to stick to God's plan, even when men don't understand God's plan. Uh, that's number four. Number five, uh, we must deny ourselves and pick up and take up our cross. It's number five. Uh, whoever wants to save their lives will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and lose their own soul? So number six is let God be in control. Don't lose your own soul. Trying to stay in control and delusional. Number seven. Uh, if you are ashamed of God, he said, anyone who, where am I at? I just had it. I just had it. Oh, if anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes. So if you're ashamed of God and you try to hide God and deny God in front of them to please them and them and them and them because it's all about them and you got to please man that you can't understand. But, you know, you can't please man and God at the same time. So you're going to choose a side. Which way you going to ride? Are you going to hide from God and deny God and lie? And carry on this fake facade. Or are you going to trust God and abide in God and pick up your cross and become a boss? Now, becoming a boss, you're going to have to take some losses. Because you're going to pick up your cross. So, if you're going to continue to please them and not him, then do you, boo. Continue to be a fool and delusional. But if you want to go where God has you to go, you have to get out of that delusional mindset, that blindset.
Allow him to renew your mind. And heal you from being blind. So you can see clearly all the time. He said the man, he did not send the man off until the man could see things clearly. Everything, not some things, not part of things. Oh, well, I seen that. Cl I could clearly see that. But can you see everything clearly? Are you in tune with reality? God doesn't have you in this delusional world and, and not in tune with reality because you're only in the delusional world because you're too busy trying to stick to a story to, to make sure that you look good or whatever and, and you're misunderstood. You're trying to, you're worried about human. <laughs> you're worried about human concerns instead of God concerns. You're not focused on my father's concerns. Otherwise, you would treat people the way you want to be treated. I shouldn't have to repeat it because you should treat people the way you will want to be treated. That is what is needed to be in God. If you're not walking around with the fake facade and because God is going to take out. He said the, the mask is going to slip off. You're going to come up to him. You're not going to go in front of them. We all got to go up to him, whether they want to believe it, whether you want to believe it or not. We all have to come up there and 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 do our share, period, by ourselves. Ain't nobody else. We're going to come up there without excuses because he already been there, done that. So. If you don't want to continue to be delusional, let go of control, put pride aside, and let God. You cannot please man and please God. It's, it's not, you choose who you're going to ride with. You either in or you out. It's not no lukewarmness because he's going to spew you out. That's what he's all about. He's not with that, oh, I'm, 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 I, I give him this part and, and then, no, I'm going to keep this part because I, I got to control this and I got to know this and I got to know. You either in, like I tell my kids, you either in or you out. If you in, you stay in. If you out, then stay out there. Don't be coming in and out. Quit coming in and out his house. You either in or you out. You're going to have to figure that out. But once you're in, my friend, he is going to heal you and reveal to you what is real. You're going to be in tune with reality. The only reason why you're in this delusional world because you're trying to keep up with the fake facade, keep up with this fake look. You're trying to look like something that you're not like. You can actually be like this. Like you can actually be good in real life. Don't get that misunderstood. You can be good in real life with the Holy Spirit. That's it. You can actually be good. You don't even have to fake like, act like something that you're not like. You can actually be good. If you put the word into practice. If you practice what you preach. Like you can, this can really happen. Uh, and it'll bring God satisfaction when you, when it really happens. Because he said, don't only be hearers of my words, but be doers also. Otherwise, you'll be just like the devil. Just on a different level. You're just like the devil. Quoting his scripture but not doing it. Being prideful. He said any man that thinks of himself more than what he is. So don't think. think of, do not think of yourself more than what you are. So. Your heart is far from God. If you're walking around with a fake facade. You're far from God. You're hiding behind a lie. You're denying God because you're more concerned with humans, human concerns than God's concern. And God's concern is the way that we treat people. Lovingly. Now, I told y'all I got in trouble because I would be real. That's why I didn't understand. I was like, Lord, I'm, I'm telling them the truth. But it was the way that I told people the truth. It, what it is. I mean, what it's going to be. See, I wasn't saying it softly um, and lovingly. It was um, judgingly and, and, you know. Uh, but God, you know, he still allows me to tell the truth. But it's the way that I tell the truth. People was like, it's not what you say. It's the way you say it. Uh, and I get it now that God had to 
let me see clearly. He helped me to see because at first I was seeing things distortedly. And I would see things, you know, when I was angry and, and all this stuff. But then now that I go beyond the cover and I discover more uh, and I can see that spirit, I'm like, oh, that's a familiar spirit. I've seen that spirit before. You know, the, the devil just changes costume. So I'm just like, oh, I see you. I know how to deal with you. The real with you. Um, so we're not going to continue to be delusional during this divine process. In order for us to be blessed, we have to go through the divine process. He's not going to send us out until we can see things clearly. He can heal us, but we may need to go back in there and get healed again. We may need to go back there and get healed again before we can clearly see. Because he had to put his hands back on the man, the blind man, because he was still seeing things distortedly. And he wanted him to see everything clearly. So he wants you to see everything clearly. Literally and spiritually. Otherwise, you're blind. I can see. You can't really see. Clearly, you can't. If you are basing it off what you think while you're in the dark, I told you, what we see while we're in this dark, in the darkness, when you're seeing it, you're in the dark. I know, oh, it's light outside. No, it's, you're in the dark, sweetheart. You're not in the light. Um, your light is dimmed because uh, you're in sin. So until you get out of the sin um, and you begin to be in God and you take off this fake facade and the lie, you'll be able to do and show yourself approved to God because you're not trying to please them. You're trying to please him. You're not worried about what everybody else is going to think or whatever. You'll be in tune with reality. You'll be able to face reality and who you are and, and your mistakes and hate and all of that stuff. I had to see me. I was like, oh, beyond this cover, I discovered Shanitra had an ugly attitude. And I no longer wanted to have that attitude. I'm like, ugh, that's ugly. I had to discover that certain parts of me was ugly. And I had to acknowledge that. Acknowledge the fact that this is ugly. Shanitra, you can't talk like that to people. Yes, I'm telling the truth, but and showing the proof, but it was the way everybody kept saying it, but I couldn't hear it. I could not hear it. I'm like, honey, I'm telling them what it is, what it's going to be. It's the reality. And I've always moved my hands, honey. But God, you know, helped me to do it in a more loving way because my hands used to be gone, honey. When something was wrong, my hands would be gone. Like, what we not going to do. It was a difference in how I used to talk and how I used to walk. But now, uh, I'm trying to adjust my crown. I ain't saying that I got my crown on now. But now that I'm trying to be found so I can wear the crown at the end of the day, uh, I have to literally change the way that I handle things, change the way that I see things. Be slow to speak because we really cannot help anybody if we're cutting them off and, and never listening to them. I mean, if I cut you off and, oh, I, I could tell you about you and what you do, you can't tell me about me if you haven't listened to me, the person that really, you know, this is, that's what I'm saying. We cannot continue to be in this delusional, confusional world. Yeah, I made up confusional. But we cannot be in this delusional, confusional world of not being in tune with reality. Like, we have to talk about what's actually, literally happening in real life. Quit trying to lie and deny. And that's what my son, I, I, like I tell you, I tell y'all the truth. I'm not trying to act like, fake like nothing. I have to tell my, my child that we're going to be in tune with reality. Quit trying to look like something that you're not. You're angry right now. I'm not. I'm trying not. No, but you already are. So next, let's acknowledge that you are mad. 
okay? Because you are. And it's not hard to see. You got your fist balled up and you disrespecting me. Literally, clearly. So, this phone is doing the most. Oh, but that's the Bible app. I hear it's telling uh, me that I'm never alone. But anyways, uh, I tell him we're going to be in tune with reality. In reality, you did push her or whatever happened. I'm not going to say, you know. But in reality, that did happen. Whether you want it to look like something that, but that's what happened. We, we have to acknowledge what happened. You're not looking like nothing in front of me. And it may work with somebody else that's delusional and don't want to be in tune with reality. But I've seen what happened. You pushed her. Whether you want to acknowledge that or not, that's what happened. That's what God is saying about being concerned with human concerns instead of his, what is right. He wants you to be on what is right and what actually reality happened like. When you repent, you have to acknowledge your actual wrongs. Like, you have to repent for the actual things. Don't just say, oh, because I was wrong. And don't say what, what you was wrong for. He wants you to acknowledge these things. Um, so you won't remain the same. You're going to continue to remain the same and blame everything on everybody else because you never see yourself. Now, this child can tell me about everybody else and their wrong, but he can never see his own wrong. He did not push her. He did not do this. He did not do that. And I'm not saying this is literal. I'm just giving out the park um, example. But, you know, he, he it did not happen. When in reality, it did happen. When We're not going to say stuff that happened in reality didn't happen. That's why we're in this delusional world now. Because we're telling children it didn't happen when it did happen. And now they don't want to attach themselves to that person that it happened to. So now they're walking confused and delusional and confusional, saying that they are something that they're not. So it's deeper than what you think. Let's dig deep. Let's go deep. Now, I will really go deep. if, But I try not to go too deep because I know I'm extremely deep person so I don't want to dive too deep but we cannot be delusional don't be concerned about what everybody else is going to think or how you're going to look for everybody else. think about how you're going to look in front of God that's that's what helps me literally how am I looking in front of my father I got to tell the truth and show the proof I'm trying to show myself approved to God not them to him so I'm not worried about them and what they're going to think and what they're going to say or how they're going to look at me or whatever I have to be in tune with reality because he helped me to see clearly and I want to continue to see things clearly and not distortedly I don't want to see things in a dysfunctional mind frame like that's just delusional uh not in tune with reality. We're just trying to look like something that we're not like. I'm not mad, but I'm mad. What? I mean, who are you trying to convince, you or me? Like, I always ask them, are you trying to convince me or you? Like, or people that say, try to tell you your experience. Well, such and such didn't say that this happened. I'm telling my experience. My experience is different. We could be dealing with the same person, but my experience, your experience could be different from somebody and you're dealing with me. You can, somebody can say this and you can have a totally different experience. Just because y'all dealing with the same person don't mean that you're going to have the same experience. That's why I don't base it off of everybody else's experience. Oh, my experience with that pastor, my experience with this person, uh, you might not not let me experience it. So, we're not going to continue to be delusional. We're going to go through this divine process so we can be blessed and not stressed and in some mess. We're not going to continue to be in the dark. We're going to actually see what it really is. We're going to turn on the light. 
only way to turn on the light is to have the Holy Spirit, the light inside of you. I'm going to turn on the light so we can shine bright so God can see us. That's all I'm trying. I'm done. Let my light shine. And help heal the blind with God. I'm not healing nothing, but, you know, God. We're not going to continue to walk around with this fake facade. This is a lie. And I actually care about people. I don't want y'all to die this way. I don't want y'all to think that y'all are obeying God and you're not. I thought I was and I wasn't. I'm like, I'm telling them the truth, but it's the way. I wasn't I wasn't doing it Yahweh. I wasn't doing it in a loving way. Literally. So on today, we must pray and obey the Almighty. We must do it his way. We must go through his divine process. They're not going to understand God's plan. Peter was one of his disciples, but he did not understand God's plan. So Jesus had to rebuke him. The enemy can get into anybody. So, no, oh, he ain't getting into me. He can't get in. You let him in when you begin to sin. You let that door open. That sinful door that you explored more, that's where he came in. You let him in. So you're going to have to close that door, that sinful door that you got open, close it. Or those sinful doors you got open, close it. Lock it. Throw away the key. So you can be who God predestined you to be. Literally. In reality. In the real world. So, that's all I think I have to let you guys know on today. We must pray and obey the Almighty. We must do it his way. Again, he said he never knew us. If we're not doing this for him and we're taking all his glory for our story, oh, look at me and look what I can do. We can't do nothing. We are nothing without God, period. It's not even up for discussion. I'm not discussing or talking to fools. That's what I'm not going to do is be a fool and be delusional too. So have a blessed day. And trust and obey the Almighty. Do it His way.